Okay, hopefully the camera focuses in on that. Oops. Got the power supply hooked up. 24 pin and 4 pin CPU connectors. Memory is in. Video is plugged up and I've got a keyboard plugged up. So now, if I can find the right pins to jumper on this dang thing. Oh, came to life. Let's check out the screen. I see keyboard lights flashing. Well, I'll be damned. There's our old CPU running on the new board. Again, just to test. And the CPU is booting at a frequency of 2.4 gigahertz. Now, the reason it's doing that is because I have a pin mod on the CPU itself uh, that ironically never worked with the old board. It would still always boot up at, at uh, 1.8 gigahertz. <laughs> and on the new board, the pin mod works. How do you like that? So, now I know the board works. Um, I'm going to put it in the, the new case and get going. It's alive. It's alive. <laughs> now here's our new CPU out of the box. Isn't she sweet? And of course there's the CPU fan that came with it. Standard gener generic Intel as thin as possible. Granted, it doesn't need to be very thick to cool the CPU at its stock speed of uh, 2.5 gigahertz, uh, being that it's a 45 nanometer processor. Uh, at that speed, the thermal output is just nil. It's very low. I gotta see if I can find something better. And finally, after hunting for about half an hour on the carpet, I found the missing springs to my tunic tower 120. There were two missing springs. They've been missing for like three months ever since this tunic tower fell off of the dresser. And uh, I didn't have it assembled very well. And so I lost the two springs and I cannot believe I managed to find the damn things. So all four springs are there. Tunic tower is down and mounted securely to the motherboard. And now I'm going to drop the motherboard into the case. It is... 3.15 a.m. and I am finished got hard drive in there again that's 120 gig Seagate serial ATA uh, tunic tower or GeForce 9600 GSO and right underneath that is a Sound Blaster Auto GSE PCI Two sticks of two gigabyte OCZ Fatality DDR4 or DDR2 800. There's our Antec basic 350 watt power supply. Uh, no name. I think it's a light on uh, DVD rewritable drive made in 2003. So it was seven years old, not six years old. And all of this in an Antec solo case. So all that's left now to do to do now is plug it up and turn it on. Make sure everything still works. Install an OS. And now comes the moment of truth. We're all hooked up. Gonna hit the power button and see what happens. Oh, I saw lights. I hear fans. Do we have screenage? I'm not seeing life. So I probably screwed something up. Well, looky here. Uh, I ended up having to exchange the motherboard because 
I figured out that it had a cold solder joint somewhere. Being that I had it in the case, I tried, uh, I think the last video I did, uh, it wasn't posting. Um, so I tried switching the uh, heat sink to see if maybe the tunic tower was torquing the board or something and causing a short, who knows what. So I installed the in stock Intel heat sink and that still didn't work and then I got to I wiggled it around a little bit over the socket and finally got it to post and it seems like there was a cold solder joint um, you could touch the memory chips uh, the memory sticks uh, or uh, the uh, heat sink while it was installed and depending on how you touched it you could cause it not to post so I went to get a new one a replacement one I called Fry's and it turns out they had gotten in a new shipment and here it is now you might notice this box looks uh, different than the first box did. Uh, I have no idea if this is a new design or an old design. I can't remember what the revision on the board I just had was. But this is the same board, G41-M7 Biostar. Uh, as you can see, this box came with two serial ATA connect uh, uh, cables. Uh, the back clean. driver's CD, the uh, fold out instruction quick start guy, and here's the shocker. Here's the motherboard. Would you look at that? Oop. Now, the astute of you will immediately notice if you watch my other video or the previous parts of this video that <laughs> this motherboard looks completely different color wise now if you look closely uh, aside from the color change in PCB and slots all the plastic on the board uh, the board is actually the exact same layout the exact same design um, have no idea what the old revision was I didn't look close enough I'll have to go back and look at the videos and pictures but this board is revision 6.5 which I believe is the latest version, so I'm I'm not positive on that, but I'm pretty sure. So here we go, Another, a new board. Hopefully, this one doesn't have any problems. Um, pretty funny. I have to give credit to my aunt because she's the one who spotted the the uh, box because we were both really looking for the boxes that look like the old Biostar boxes uh, white and black and she just happened to spot this uh, whole stack of them now these were this is uh, of course this is not open box this was brand new uh, still sealed in the anti-static bag the box was still bundled and closed still sh sealed shut uh, so hoping for good things uh, so now all I have to do is and get it in the case. Now some people have asked me what my thermal paste of choice is. Uh, I do not recommend Arctic Silver anymore. Uh, there are plenty of, of better thermal paste. In fact, the uh, stock thermal paste that's on the, that comes with Intel uh, CPUs or Intel heat sinks. Uh, is actually made by Shin Etsu and wouldn't you know it that's what I actually recommend nowadays and that's for any application whether it be CPUs uh, your GPUs uh, any other kind of chips that you need to replace the uh, the thermal compound between a heatsink and, and a uh, chip uh, Shin Etsu is wonderful it's probably the best has the best thermal qualities of any uh, CPU thermal paste out there uh, it has no curing time whatsoever so it works immediately uh, pretty much anyway uh, it is absolutely completely 100% non-conductive electrically which means you don't have to worry about when you're putting it on your video card getting an accidental spill or whatever and uh, ruining your video card. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people ruin their video cards.